Right, we've got to talk about it. Should Manchester United sell Marcus Rashford? With Marcus Rashford's contract expiring in 2023, United do have an extra year as an option. But the big thing, Marcus Rashford potentially will look to make a move away for after that contract expires and Paris Saint-Germain are interested. This is reported in the French press by Le Keep, and it's something that we probably need to discuss and talk about it. For me personally, should Manchester United sell Marcus Rashford? Absolutely not. For me, Marcus is the player that we should be building our team around. Again, the consistency of his form over the last 12 months hasn't been at the same levels as previously, but homegrown through the academy. These are players that should be championed at Manchester United. Can I understand why, you know, his representatives and himself could be thinking about a move? Absolutely. You know, I think there could be a good restart for his career if I'm thinking from a, you know, adv advising him personally. Could be quite good to go and play in another league, to have another experience, to get that love of football back. But for me, I would definitely not sell Manchester United. Uh, PSG apparently value him at around 60 million. And Manchester, Manchester United value him at 120 million. So in between that, maybe 80 or 90 million pounds. Rashford right now is probably at the peak of his value. But let's flip that round. If United were to sell Marcus Rashford, what does that mean for the team? What does that mean in, ter mean in terms of the position? Who's going to come in? Who's going to play the role? Um, and what's going to kind of happen? You know, I don't want Marcus Rashford to leave, but let's take that as an opportunity to maybe grow the side, to bring other players in and spend a little bit of cash. I think first and foremost, Marcus Rashford's best position is wide left, is an inverted winger, uh, but also can operate as an inside forward a little bit closer to the number nine, uh, scoring goals and providing. Uh, but I do think his, his biggest strength is, is when he's in that wide area, you know, taking people on, getting creative, looking getting shots away, creating chances for teammates. Uh, would fit into a number of sides in European football. Bayern Munich uh, reportedly were interested at the start of the summer, but then they saw they signed Sadio Mane. Uh, but of course, PSG are the team that are looking at him right now. So if United were to let Marcus Rashford go, which I really wouldn't want to see, there are players in and around the squad that could come in straight away and play that role. Um, you know, from a sense of not changing the the sort of starting eleven apart from Marcus Rashford's position, Anthony Alanga could come in. So that role, um, Anthony Alanga is capable of playing wide left, wide right, operates in a similar sense as a inverted winger, cutting in onto that stronger foot and looking to get shots away. Interestingly enough, Anthony Alanga also, when he plays right, does like to drift into that central uh, space as well. Alternatively, Jaden Sancho could go out there uh, with Alanga on the right-hand side um, and could play that role pretty well. Had his best goal-scoring season at Borussia Dortmund playing from the left wing, not from the right wing. But I think if you're going to be letting someone like Marcus Rashford go, the academy, youth has got to be something that wins. Um, and that's where someone like uh, Alejandro Ganacho would come in, reverting Sancho back to that right-hand side and allowing Ganacho to be that creative force, that dribbler, that player that's playing with no fear uh, right now. Has big, big potential, directly involved in a goal every 52 minutes in the FA Youth Cup. The kid is absolutely fantastic. So if United have got in-house replacements for the left wing, what should they spend that money on if this goes through? Uh, well, I think first and foremost, there's a number of different roles and positions that United need to strengthen. Uh, in the forward line, you know, it, 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 it's a big area that needs bodies. It needs bodies, needs players that play in a slightly different way. Um, and one man that could be available on the market for rel relatively cheap for around 10 million would be Hakem uh, Ziyech at Chelsea. I think Hakem Ziyech would be a brilliant signing for Manchester United. Having watched Ziyech at Ajax and seen how well uh, he played under Eric Ten Hag. It's one of those things where he, he played at such a high level that if you can get anywhere closer to that in the Premier League would be good. Ziyech is an interesting character, but it's worked under Eric Ten Hag before. There's other signings that United are linked with, your Rabios, your Icardis, your Analtoviches that just personality-wise have never had that real role and flow with any team. Uh, the big thing with Hakim Ziyech, not only is he perfect for... Uh, the creation, you know, those deep inverted crosses from a deep area when teams are defending in a low block. I feel that United lack a bit of directness in the final third at the moment. Uh, for one of the, the attacking players to, to make something happen, that is Hakem Ziyech. She added 9.2 shots per 90 to Ajax's attack in the Eredivisie. 9.2 shots. 
which is pretty crazy. Uh, for Chelsea as well, let's take the you know Premier League side. He's averaging um, 5.4 shots created per 90 uh, during the two seasons. So the, the, obviously the chance creation from Eredivisie to Premier League is going to drop, but it's not dropped that much. So that's something that I'd look at and consider. But the biggest thing of all, uh, Ziyech made the most, most successful pressures in the 18-19 season when Ajax got to the semi-finals in the Champions League. He's aggressive off the ball, which I think is another thing United need a little bit more, uh, you know, attention to is players that are going to really go and start that pressing motion and squeezing high at the pitch. So for £10 million, uh, I'd say that's an absolute bargain. We've still got £70 million in the bank. Number one, Frankie Dion could join. It's something that we wanted for a long time. It simply would improve Manchester United massively. You know, done. You've got probably two players in there. You've got a six, and you've got a, uh, you know, you've got a number eight in in one role. Could play next to Ericsson, Could play next to Fred. Would just be absolutely fantastic. Alternatively, I would have probably hijacked the uh, the Froiler deal to Nottingham Forest. I think he's a very good player, comparable to a lot of top quality footballers. I think he's got the ability to play a number of different roles. Um, but let's take United uh, sign a maybe more of a midfield destroyer that's kind of clean on the ball. Manu Kony from, from Borussia Much and Gladbach would be someone that I'd spend the cash on. Um, valued currently at £16 million on transfer mark. Do you think in £30 million probably could be enough? Uh, his profile is very, very similar to N'Golo Kante. Excellent ball winner, um, especially when tackling dribblers. Keeps the passing kind of real short and simple in possession, which would suit him playing next to a, let's say, a Christian Eriksen or a, you know another player that's going to drop deep. Uh, can feed the fullbacks, can feed the the centre backs with the ball for them to carry out as well. Got the ability to drive past players on the carry, really dynamic. But the biggest thing is he's very good at stopping defensive transitions, which is something United need to get better at. Stopping the opposition, counter-attacking them. Someone like Manu Kony would be absolutely perfect with that. So we're talking 30 million. We've got a bit of cash to spend, but we've also got more cash because we've not bought that many players this summer. Um, and to partner him in midfield, if it's not Christian Eriksen, signing Sergi Milinkovic Savic would be an absolute masterstroke. His ability in between the lines would be fantastic. Uh, moving into that number 10 line, you think Gravenberg did that for... Um, Eric Ten Hag at Ajax and it'd simply be a similar move moving to that number 10 area the one thing you potentially would say maybe playing a Manu Kone and a Milinkovic Savic would put a little bit of pressure on Lisandro Martinez and Harry Maguire to be, be the guys that are progressing the ball that are playing those line breaking passes but you know, you don't need to worry. Uh, Lisandro Martinez ranks in the top 1% of players. Uh, it, one play, let's do that again. Lisandro Martinez ranks in the top 1% of centre-backs for progressive passes per 90. Uh, and since moving to Manchester United, Harry Maguire's uh, find, found the final third with passes more than any other Premier League centre-back, so that might not be a problem. So that's the side that United could build, maybe with the money that they gained from the sale of Marcus Rashford, but I don't really want that to happen, and Man United should be able to build this team with Marcus Rashford in there. You're thinking maybe leaving Hakem Ziyech um, in there, but improving that number six and number eight line in Milinkovic, Savic and uh, Manu Kone coming in is how I'd love to see United evolve. But it also leaves you a bit of cash to spend on centre-forwards, uh, players that may be available uh, in European football. You're looking at the likes of uh, Alexander Isaac, you're looking at Jonathan David, Victor Osimhen, Chira Mobley maybe, get him from Lazio to play that kind of old role, Andre Kramaric from Hoffenheim, but I think the new one where United could go and maybe simply pick him up, uh, Duvan Zapata from Atalanta could be a very, very cheap way to get a top quality centre forward. At 31 years old, uh, he's very complete in a sense of can operate as a target man, balls into feet, can spin into the channels, can finish with his feet, can finish with his head, can play people through. I genuinely think could be a great shout for United looking for a slightly older centre forward that would fit him perfectly. That's probably got a few years left him in, in his tank at the top level as well. You know, having for two seasons, move him on after destroying the Premier League. But that's how I'd like United to look if Marcus Rashford were, were to be sold. Again, I wouldn't sell Marcus Rashford. I think he's got a unique talent that you know, if he gets back into form, can be one of Eric Ten Hag's best players. So that in my thoughts. Guys, if you are new around here, hit that subscribe button, like that goddamn video, and get in the comments below. Who do you want to see us check out next? Thank you for watching.